Because look, what this does is celebrate our oldest ally. The United States, we all know France is our oldest ally. And it just seems very special and very appropriate that on December 1st, we are celebrating just that. Every man has two countries, France and his own. My name is Rufus Gifford. I am Chief of Protocol of the United States. I've been in this job for approximately one year and I'm just so thrilled to be working with our French partners on this first state visit uh, of the Biden administration and also our first state visit since before COVID. I am a twice Senate confirmed US ambassador. Um, this job is ambassador rank. I was also served overseas. I was the US ambassador to Denmark under President Obama. It's a, probably a slightly non-traditional path to to getting this role. I was deputy campaign manager for President Biden, now President Biden, um, and uh, he asked me to serve in this position. I am very, very invested in what I like to call human to human diplomacy, uh, which is a very much an important part of what protocol is. Protocol is very much about trying to create an environment in which diplomacy can thrive. A lot of people talk about soft power. Protocol is really the epitome of soft power. How can we try to build that environment and whether that is when we invite our foreign partners to Washington or whether we are going overseas, what are the little things that we can do to help try to advance um, our national interests? Uh, what are the little things that we can do to help try to build and grow these partnerships? And that is so much of the work of diplomacy. We are in many ways uh, the primary liaison between foreign governments and the Biden administration. So whether you are an ambassador who is just arriving in Washington, whether you are a foreign leader who is coming to see our president, our vice president, our secretary of state, our first lady. It is the protocol office that puts these trips together. Um, and also we travel the world uh, with the president, the vice president, the first lady. A state visit, and it's, a state visit is such an important part uh, of what we do here in the office of protocol. It's kind of the highest level of diplomacy um, that you can engage in. Let me say this, I am personally very excited that President Biden invited President Macron to be the guest at his first state dinner. I will describe what a state visit is by American standards. It's when our head of state, meaning our president, invites another head of state to visit him or her at the White House. Um, what does that consist of? Um, it consists of a stay at Blair House. Blair House, many of you don't know what Blair House is. It's the president's guest house, and it's one of the most extraordinary buildings in the United States government uh, that we're trying to do some new and innovative uh, events uh, and, and things with. It involves a very formal arrival ceremony. Uh, so when a head of state arrives at Andrews Air Force Base, um, they'll be greeted with all the pomp and circumstance that you might think of when a foreign leader visits another country. It involves a very formal arrival ceremony at the South Portico of the, uh, of the White House. We're expecting thousands of guests to show up at the South Lawn of the White House when President and Mrs. Macron arrive uh, at the White House for the first time on this visit um, on the morning of December 1st. Then we'll have a bilateral program, in essence, the policy kind of the, the hard power part uh, of the state visit. Um, we'll have a wonderful lunch right here at the State Department, hosted by the Vice President and the Secretary of State. And then, of course, the, the, the event that everyone talks about, it's the more formal black tie dinner um, at the White House on the evening of December 1st. Uh, this one's going to be fun. We haven't, as I said, we haven't done one of these in quite some time. Uh, we're going to do it under a tent on the South Lawn uh, with hundreds of friends of both the United States and France. Uh, there actually hasn't been a tented uh, state visit in the United States since the end of the Obama administration, not since the fall of 2016. So it's gonna be so, so fun to see all of these people, uh, both friends of the United States, uh, friends of France, we're gonna get some important work done. Uh, of course we are. Uh, but I, I think in many ways, what we focus on is really trying to build that environment in which diplomacy can thrive uh, and really highlight and do all we can to bring our already incredibly close, close countries um, even closer together. Are the French easy to work with? It's a good question. I honestly, we have a, I have a fantastic relationship with my counterparts and I consider my counterparts, uh, uh, Philippe Etienne, who is the French uh, ambassador to the United States and Philippe Franck, who is the ch French chief of protocol. I speak to both of them, if not daily, then every week as we prepare for this event. Um, there's lots of negotiation to be done because it's actually, 
I described the program, but then the French delegation, President Macron, uh, actually is interested in doing a number of side events uh, while he's here as well. So we coordinate from start to finish, from the moment uh, President and Mrs. Macron land in Washington until the moment they fly out of the United States, we will coordinate every little piece of their visit um, and work with the French delegation to make sure that um, not only our our interests met here, but the French interests are, are met as well. And that's, that's, that's very, very important to us. It's important to us at Protocol uh, to ensure that our French partners uh, are getting as much as they want out of this trip uh, as well. And, you know, are the French easy to work with? Well, um, yes, the French are very easy to work with. It's a very diplomatic statement that I can make right now. <laughs> but no, in all sincerity, the French are wonderful partners, our oldest allies, uh, and they've been such a pleasure to work with from the beginning of this process. When I talk about the U.S.-French uh, relationship, um, I think a lot of Americans don't understand historically how important France is to the United States of America being a country. And every single time, so we're, we're at the State Department right now, um, every single time I bring a foreign minister or a head of government up to the eighth floor of the State Department, which is where Secretary Blinken uh, does his meetings with other world leaders, um, I, I show that him or her, the other world leader, all of the French American artifacts that we have upstairs. We have things like Thomas Jefferson's desk when he, as one of our first diplomats who served in Paris. We have desks upstairs where the Treaty of Paris, which established the United States as a country, um, is it's there's all sorts of artifacts are related to Lafayette. And and so what is so wonderful, and I think when you're in a job like this, all it all you, you can't help but just be um, overwhelmed by this partnership, which has gone back you know, gone dates far before the foundation of our country. So that is enormously, enormously, enormously important. Personally and selfishly, uh, going to Paris uh, is easily, if not my favorite place in the, wor uh, the world to visit, one of my favorite places in the world to visit. Um, I will say this, that um, you're hosting the Olympics uh, in 2024. And I've heard a few things about the plans uh, about these Olympics. This Olympics also happens to coincide with my 50th birthday. So I, I have every intention of doing everything I can to celebrate my 50th birthday on the, the, on the banks of the Seine while watching the Olympics. There will be nothing better as far as I'm concerned than watching the Olympics um, in Paris.